By golly, I think we killed it. This is what Bill Melendez said in utter embarrassment as he watched the final cut of A Charlie Brown Christmas a few days before it was set to release. He, Charles Schultz, and Lee Mendelson had gone against every social conformity associated with TV in order to make the Charlie Brown Christmas special innovative and fresh. The New York Times had called it a gamble, and from the looks of things, Schultz's team had lost. Today, we are going to tell you all the reasons this classic Christmas story should have completely failed. Before we dive into it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's really all I want for Christmas, and thank you so much. By the early 1960s, Charles Schultz had won fame through his comics, The Peanuts. However, as soon as he had won it, his associate and television producer, Lee Mendelson, was going to ruin it. Mendelson was trying to get momentum for a documentary idea for The Peanuts, so when the Coca-Cola company approached him with an idea for making a Peanuts Christmas special, he said yes without thinking. He called Schultz and said, The good news was that they had an opportunity to turn the Peanuts into a TV special. The bad news was that they had to send in the pitch within less than five days. Fortunately, necessity is the mother of invention, and within a day they had a story ready. It was approved, but then came animating the story within only six months before Christmas. And Schultz was only a comic artist. Therefore, he pulled in the help of a former Disney animator whom he had previously worked with on Peanuts Ford Motor commercials. This animator's nickname was Bill Melendez, but his real name was... And I am not going to try to say that. Now Schultz had talent and fame on his side, and together, he and his team were about to use a Charlie Brown Christmas to commit some of the biggest no-nos that ever graced a 1960s television screen. In 1960s television, child characters were played by adults. Schultz, Mendelssohn, and Melendez didn't want that. They wanted children to be played by children. And as if that wasn't enough shock, they wanted the children to be untrained actors. While Charlie Brown and Linus's actors were trained, the rest were not. Some of the children were so young that the team had to feed them half a line at a time, which you may note in Sally's voice. All I want is what I have have coming to me. All I want is my fair share. Then came Snoopy's voice. The big question was, how do you come up with a voice for a dog? Melendez filled the role by creating random sounds. He said, why hire someone else to do it? It's already done. We can use it. And so he became Snoopy. Another no-no was the jazz score. Jazz was seen as the compromised music to gain adults and children's attention. However, it was also a risk since jazz, at the time, didn't usually mesh well with the Christmas spirit. Another and almost ironic unconventional choice was that the story had a focus on anti-commercialization while advertising for the Coca-Cola company. But probably the biggest no-no of all was the Bible quote. The climax of the story is when Charlie Brown, frustrated over the over-commercialization of Christmas, asks if anyone knows what Christmas is all about. Then Linus responds with the KJV translation in Luke chapter 2 about Jesus' birth. This was entirely Schultz's idea, and even Mendelssohn and Melendez were uneasy about it. It was odd for Linus to have such a large vocabulary, and it was highly unconventional for the Bible, much less the conservative KJV, to be quoted on television. When Mendelssohn and Melendez voiced their concerns, Schultz responded, Well, if we don't do it, who will? Schultz's wife later speculated that Schultz put the Bible quote in because traditionally, Bible readings were secluded to churches in the 1960s. Schultz's wife said, I think that he probably felt that the Bible verses aren't just for church, they're for everyone. Feeling very strong about this point of inclusivity, Schultz put his foot down and CBS allowed the quote. However, days before the air date, CBS and Schultz's team got a chance to look at the outcome of their product. Mendelssohn recalled that CBS didn't get the voices, they didn't get the music, they didn't get the pacing, 
We thought that we had ruined Charlie Brown. Critics and audiences are two different creatures. What critics may hate, audiences may love. And the audience fuels the entertainment industry. Despite initial bad forecasts, on December 9th, 1965, 15 million households tuned in to judge a Charlie Brown Christmas for themselves, and they loved what they saw. Though Schultz and his team were pleased with the response, they expected it to be more of a once-in-a-lifetime explosion of success. However, the next year, a Charlie Brown Christmas won an Emmy and Peabody Award for the Most Outstanding Children's Show. The show ran annually on CBS for 35 years until ABC acquired the rights in 2001. And to this day, A Charlie Brown Christmas serves as a classic American treasure that keeps the spirit of Christmas alive in American households every year. If you like that, check out our Christmas versus War video and subscribe. Why? Because I have a hungry poodle and subs help feed her. Thank you!